Hello, Athene. Many thanks for tuning in to Y254 News Highlights. It's 20th of May 2019. Many thanks for joining us tonight. Discussion Monday will be looking at how we can unite Africa on development and create a corruption free continent. I'll be speaking to uh, our panelist of Honorables here. From my left, I have Hussein Gadane from Garissa County, Honorable Chege Wamaratu, and Chris Mack, Honorable are as well. So keep it Y254. You can join our conversation by sending us your comments on all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. At Murani Hillary is my Twitter handle. Uh, you can also ask questions to my panelists tonight and they uh, put your questions or what you'd want to hear in terms of development, what has been done in our country and what you expect more. So uh, welcome to the program. My name is Dereva Hillary. We move straight to our discussion. And I want to begin with a project that uh, will be uniting Kenya uh, and other three countries, and that is Kenya, Ethiopia, and Sudan, which is the LAPSIT. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. It's, it's good, good to you. have you here. Now, I want to begin with you, Chege. Yes. We have the LAPSIT, which is the Lamu Port and South Sudan Ethiopia Transport, which is the LAPSIT project, and it will open up a pass passageway for an increase of trade opportunities with Kenya's northern neighbors, that is Sudan, so Southern Sudan and Ethiopia. And now, how do you think this project will lead to opportunities in multiple areas of Kenya? Uh, thank you very much, Hilary, for having us here today. Uh, for the viewers, my name is Shegi Wamarato from Nandarwa County. I'm a CEO of the Moja Foundation, an NGO, and also uh, a director, public policy, and uh, special, special programs, programs autism lights. Okay. Our work is to create awareness and uh, increase acceptance on matters of autism. Mm -hmm. uh, the project will really help us because here we are here speaking as the youth of this country and the youth of Africa. Mm -hmm. The project is a plus to our country and Africa at large because we will uh, see many people get employed, many youth uh, getting involved in it and I think it's a good thing that we should all support as, uh, as, as, as East Africans. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, uh, Hussein, Garissa <coughs> County is one of the ESL counties in Kenya and um, believe, I'm in the belief that this project would probably benefit the people but According to you, how do you think the opportunities will be created in the northern part of Kenya? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Hilary, first of all, for having us, like my brother said here. Uh, the project on Lapset is very fundamental for our people. Yes. Actually, Garissa is one of the towns that passes the Lapset mm -hmm. all the way from Moyale. Yes. So as the pastoral community, we agreed, set and agreed at a level with our community and with our leaders. We actually paved the way for the Lapset to, to go through because we are a, we are a pastoral community. We entirely do the livestocking and, uh, for, our, for our animals, so we barely, we barely don't have any land to give since we are pastoralists. Mm -hmm. But again, we understood through civic education, through awareness, through public participations, mm -hmm. the importance and the magnificence that we can have mm -hmm. if the lapsed goes through. That's why as a community uh, from Garissa and a pastoral community, we paved the way for a lapsed in our community land. Because also in the constitution, the county government shall act on behalf of the national government as, ma as far as the land issue is concerned. So therefore, as a community, we are welcoming it. And uh, the youth of that county are very vibrant because the 60% of the population in my area are youth. Mm -hmm. So we are welcoming it. Uh, speaking of the youth and your county, <coughs> I'm looking at it this way. What has already been done in terms of creating awareness and how are the youths equipped? Because we have seen like the construction of SGR, uh, where it will go through we haven't seen much done about the community, the involvement in terms of constructing it. Now, how are the youths in Garissa County equipped to ensure that if the lapset now gets to the corridor, they will work on it themselves? And first of all, Hillary, and <coughs> over 80% of the manpower in Garissa are youth. And of course, now we are sorting some issues with the lapset themselves because there were areas they were to do the compensation. Mm -hmm. But you know, there, were, there was, used to be a headache from a long time ago if uh, Lapset or if Kenha or passing anywhere, everybody's taking a place so that you know, they get the money out of it. But this time, the policies are very different. Right. The national government cons and, and, uh, who, are, who are dealing with matters of Lapset will directly fund the county government who are now trusted on behalf of the national government. Mm -hmm. Now the county government will pay to the people because they identify their people so well. Yes. We have been having those issues lately, mm -hmm. but I can tell you uh, the people on the desk 
were the youth, the people advocating for each and every word that passes through the lapsets are the youth of this county. And to be honest with you, and from where I come from, we take public participation very seriously because sure. in the constitution, only the word public participation itself is mentioned 16 times in the constitution. Mm -hmm. It's like a Bible or a Holy Quran. Yes. See, that's how that's how we take we seriously take matters of public participation. All right, I'll take your word and hope we will not have stories to do with the, <laughs> the youths claiming they have not been involved in the uh, Lapset project. Now, Chris, yes. how do you think the Lapset project will provide opportunities to the youth? You come from Lake Epia yeah. and I know your county produces goods. And we're hoping to take them to Ethiopia or even Southern Sudan. Uh, very much. Thank you once again, Hillary. In fact, when you talk of issues of uniting, I look at it in two approaches. You cannot, first of all, unite a hungry youth, right? Mm -hmm. So when I looked at the master plan, when they came up with the idea before the former president uh, retired, mm -hmm. there were the establishment of the resort cities mm -hmm. in most of the major stopovers, even in Garissa. Mm -hmm. Apart from the works and everything of that, the small entrepreneurs who will be in these resort cities, we'd want them to be youth. This would be a very fast opportunity for them. True. And uh, once they're empowered that way, we are empowering and uniting at the same time. <coughs> and uh, once a youth is uh, able to fend for themselves, it's easy to talk of unity. Mm -hmm. The other issue, if you look at the passageway of the lapset, okay. it passes places which are a bit arid, right. which have been prone to conflict. Mm -hmm. Uh, cattle rustling, uh, like Ipia, okay, has the issues of cattle rustling. So I tend to relate a lot with the counties where the lapset would pass. Right. So if we can make sure it passes there, it brings development. Mm -hmm. And uh, some cultural practices which uh, are, uh, okay, have been bypassed by time sure. will be sorted with this modernization. Mm -hmm. So I look at it in those two aspects. And maybe the third thing, you know, I saw it, I think the chair of the lapset is Ambassador Mutaura. Mm -hmm. So for it even to be very effective, I don't know what they would have done, but we needed the youth also. True. Not as chair, but part of the team that is driving the whole process. True. So at least when you're doing even that whole great project, we can get the youth mentality involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think on those two approaches, it would lead in the uniting of the youth and even creating those opportunities. Yeah, you speak of the youth, and in the recent past, we have seen the youth being claimed to be uh, not well equipped. They have no leadership skills. They can do that. They are corrupt. How do you expect the youth to be in such panels to ensure that the projects that the government proposes, <coughs> we will have youth who will spearhead the agenda of the government of the time? Mm. Okay, first of all, it's okay, not making an excuse for them. If these youth are corrupt, I think they've learned from the say, but be as it may, let's not try that mentors. excuse. <laughs> yes, we, they have looked up to this uh, older generation and thought that is the way. Mm -hmm. But be as it may, we cannot say we are not going to deny these uh, youth such capacities and positions of empowerment mm -hmm. and growth because of that perception that the youth are, are corrupt. You might find there's only a few, but if we'd expand these spaces, we'd, uh, we'd get youths who are, who are role models, you know. Mm -hmm. We've seen them. I won't mention names, but we've seen them and... Uh, I would mention him, it looked like I'm biased on, towards some person, but we've seen when a youth is given a position, there are those who, with the uh, proper molding, proper mentorship, they're doing great things. All right. They just need that space. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they need better role models because probably then they're looking at this older generation that that is the way. Mm -hmm. So, and then it left the tag behind that, you know, even the youth are also corrupt. All right, yeah. Uh, Chege, what's your opinion on that? You know, uh, we are the youth. <laughs> we're seated here. Yes. Mark. And Hussein, we are the youth, right? So it's not every youth that is corrupt. The youth are corrupt, as Moshimua said, because they've seen uh, uh, how, you know, you wake up in the morning, you see 20 billion is gone. Mm -hmm. What, what, and yourself, mm -hmm. you're there with all the depression and problems that you're facing. Mm -hmm. What will you do? You know, I'm not saying that is a good thing, but uh, my take is if this youth, our youth can be empowered, mm -hmm. can be uh, given capacity, build, capacity building, and be shown the way they can lead in so many positions in this country. Right. Because as we say, we are not too young to lead. You understand? Yeah. We have skills. We have. Uh, uh, we are able to lead in a, in any capacity in any position in this country. Right. And that's my take. Honorable Sin, I want us to digress a little bit yeah. uh, f because the youth have been said to be corrupt and now they have moved to something different to get them something because we saw in 2017, 2018, uh, there was a statistics where the youth wanted things to happen to them very fast. They needed mm. things like to happen to them yeah. within a snap of a finger. But now uh, they have moved to betting because they believe here we will get the easy thing, money, you know. Mm. And we have seen so many youth go to betting. We have seen th them get wasted in drugs. Uh, we have 
had cases in coast where most of the youth are in drugs. So it's happening even in Nairobi. And we're speaking of where we can only see. How about in the rural areas where we have the youths who have got lost in alcoholism? What do you think should be done? Mm. First of all, on matters of corruption of youth, I think uh, if an elderly person embezzles money in the country, we call it corruption. But if a youth embezzles money, we call it heat, just taking, because we are the majority. And uh, when you own, sh own a shop, mm -hmm. it's you to take something from the money and return it. You know, that's, that's my, my opinion. Because in Africa, uh, Kenya is, I think, number three on youth population at 20.3%. Back in the country, we were about 56% of the, of the voting block. That's already 50 plus one. You see, when you are not including us in your decision-making tables, I mean, what do you expect? Mm -hmm. Initially, uh, before I come to the other question, they said there's something called Building Bridges Initiative. Right. So what the cause, the main cause of the Building Bridges Initiative was to bring together the communities, the people who fought during the electioneering period, right. and who fought more than the youth. If you, if you go to the police station, if you track record, go to the hospitals, the youth are the fundamental. Mm -hmm. and, and people are mis being misused during the election period. And there's no single person, mm -hmm. single member of the youth. The, I think the youngest person on the committee on building bridges is 55 years of age. You see, those are the kinds we... And things that's not a youth according to our constitution. Yes, yes. So those are the things we go through. Right. And if you see the crime rate, the drugs you're talking about, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, going through all the time. And to add on that, uh, Hillary, right. you know, also, uh, as you are setting an example as youth of this country, we might be seated here looking like we're wearing suits and all that, but we are vijana, you understand? So as we are doing what we can to prove the, uh, the country that we can be trusted, we can do great things. Mm -hmm. If you can see what Moshimo Chris Mark is doing in his county, in uh, Dagane here, mm -hmm. they are proving that we can do, as we, we can do great work, mm -hmm. we can uh, be trusted as youth, you understand? Right. Right. So this thing of saying that uh, oh, we won't give this position to a youth because youth, when they are given, they steal, they do what? They learn from their fathers. Right. Myself, I uh, inherited a lot from my father. Okay. So I think us as a youth, we are setting a pace mm -hmm. where we are. And that's why I'm saying we don't have to be in those positions for us to, to lead. You understand? True. We start from where we are, then the, 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 the we can get to the other pace, to the other space. All right. Let's touch on another uh, project. Now, Chris Mark, uh, the Kenya Airports Authority is in the midst of building a shopping mall, a hotel, business zone, mm -hmm. and commercial passenger terminal at JKIA. Mm -hmm. Now, this terminal would provide successful binding com companies with equipment and materials for improvement to Kenya's airport. Now, will this development increase the flow through Kenya, uh, th flow of people to Kenya through such uh, places or developments? Yes, uh, I, I would think so, because I've had a chance to, uh, to travel to other airports and uh, ours, you can see the international standards that is there. Mm -hmm. And once something, uh, you know, perception is always playing around everywhere in the world. That airport looks, the standards it is, it looks safe. So anybody wants to come to Kenya or rather to go and transit through, feels safe. The other thing, at least after the election, we were able to stabilize mm -hmm. the economy. We were able to, to, to calm down the, the temperatures. Mm -hmm. So the room for traffic of tourism is also more. Mm -hmm. And uh, these malls, maybe if I can touch on them, you know when I was young and we'd go to the airport, we would see everybody who was, they were calling them the duty-free shops. Mm -hmm. They were made to look like a, 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 a privilege for the, you know, like the names you'd hear, like Patney owns a few, mm -hmm. and, uh, and some other uh, really prominent guys. If that project were to come, let it be put in a way that, you know, we're also giving priority to also the young investors and the, the youth, you know, to also be part of this uh, stalls and everything there. Mm -hmm. There's one they've put there, but if you go and see the goodwill they're asking for a youth, now where is the youth going to get goodwill? Mm -hmm. So as much as we want this airport to grow, mm -hmm. have diverse business, have more uh, variety in terms of duty-free things, we must make sure that it is accessible to a youth, mm -hmm. you know. Because at times the opportunities are there, but we make, we make a big bridge towards them. You know, a youth feels like th this is not my category. I'll not be able to get a shop right. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honorable Singh, is Kenya becoming intra-regional hub for infrastructure through that? Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> and, um, and maybe talk about what Chris Mark said. I, I think he's privileged to go to the airport when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, the last time I set a foot in the airport was I was 19 years old. You know, that's, I'm a Kenyan already, mm -hmm. but that's to him. Anyways, and Chris Mack is also uh, meeting some other organizations we are, which are, lo are launching Ajira. Ajira is an app and so that the youth can set their uh, 
their CVs, their resumes, what they can do, then they will be taken online. I think he will talk about it um, on his free time. Because in Kenya now we are approaching where we are approaching a times of, you know, we are making use of the internet usage. Mm -hmm. And the, if you go to Facebook, you will see some so much online and links. I also buy watches from that place. It's so much easy. Mm -hmm. And in America, and in the 80s, 70s, they say before the new technology, 50% of their population were in their farms, mm -hmm. producing foods for their families and for their countrymen. Mm -hmm. But now since the new technology came, Hillary, you know what they say? Only 3% of their people are in their farms which are producing surplus for the entire world. Right. And, uh, you know, I was seeing some other research, very funny one. And actually 4.8 billion people have fonts. Mm -hmm. And 4.6 billion people have toothbrush. <laughs> so you can imagine. <laughs> so, so you can imagine if you don't make use of your phone mm -hmm. currently as a youth, no one is coming for you. Sure. And, and uh, the, the thing I like about Kenya is that we are facing, we are approaching that, uh, that you know, momentum mm -hmm. towards the new technology and, uh, and IT. Mm -hmm. And Hillary, just to add on that, right. know, we, 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 we might uh, uh, talk a lot about the youth or the, the technology is very important. These are our phones. We have all, all we have WhatsApp and all, and I'm happy with a group. I, I saw a group uh, that has created an app where you can uh, yeah, you, youth in urban area can start doing farming. It's called aquaponic or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't need a a, a big uh, mass of land for you to start doing potatoes. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we should. I think as youth who are watching and a youth uh, youth of this country should start using their mobile phone to make money, right. you understand? So if we make money, you know, we keep talking about corruption, we, talk, we keep talking about opportunities of the youth, but we can also create our own opportunities through social media. Right. I've seen another young man called Dennis, J Dennis Ituma. Mm -hmm. he's, a, uh, he's a Facebook DJ and he makes a lot of money. Guys are advertising on his page and he's making money. He, he wakes up in the morning, he starts mixing, he's receiving cash. You understand? Sure. So it's, it's high time we start becoming creative. We start stop, uh, stop uh, depending on the government. Because, to be honest, uh, if we depend on government, we've already seen it has failed us in so many ways. You understand? Mm -hmm. Youth are very, uh, youth of this country are depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, kama someone said, vijana hawana kakitu kwa mfuko. And you, if you don't have kakitu kwa mfuko, you how will you even take it. your girlfriend for a date? So, and these are Definitely our girlfriends, they, <laughs> they're in this level of uh, social life and all that, you want to keep to that pace. So True. you become depressed. That you're seeing, youth are killing each other. Yeah? Of uh, you see, the, the, uh, like in my, in my county, Nyandarwa, mm -hmm. you just saw the other day on BBC, 70% suicide, suicides. Guys are killing each other because for a man, for pride yet to come on how many I'm able to provide for my family, I'm able to pay for true, school fees for true, my kids, true, true. or take my wife for, 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 for a ride or something. Mm -hmm. If I cannot achieve those things, then we have a problem. It's a timing bomb. So mm -hmm. let us be creative. Let us use the opportunities that we have there social media and uh for for once you stop st we stop complaining too much let's come together because once we are united as african youth mm -hmm. we can do a lot right. we can do a lot mm -hmm. yes uh, okay before be before you respond on this chris uh there has been a question of helping the youth in terms of providing the youth fund and yes. the weather fund that was there maybe you can make a comment on that what has happened are the youth benefiting Okay, even before I go there, you know, whenever I hear things of agriculture and uh, even what you've said about the airport, mm -hmm. it's, it's always good, at least when we come here, we also talk a bit about devolution because it has opened the spaces. Because as that airport is expanding, mm -hmm. it is just the other day when we had the devolution summit that Kirinyaga was able to say that now they are selling their coffee direct to. Yes. They even have, I think, a shop at the New York. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So when this airport expands, it means even cargo is going fast. Mm -hmm. The other day, like Kipia was able to sign a memorandum of agreement with the Kenya Airport, no, KQ, KQ Kenya Airways, KQ. so they can get their flowers from the flower farms there direct. Mm -hmm. And this is happening across board. Yeah. So, and I know it's going to pick momentum. So we want when that uh, momentum picks and there's flooding of such goods for uh, regional markets, for export and, and, uh, and uh, that, we want the airport to be able to also handle that. So that plan mm -hmm. by KIA, and I hope they also manage themselves well. You know, there's been the issue of mismanaging the airport and the mm -hmm. national courier. So mm -hmm. on the issue of the, the youth fund, uh, they are really doing a lot, but I still feel there should be more because I get to go to the ground I find youth having very, uh, very massive innovations. Like there's a youth in Laikipia mm -hmm. who's building local fridges, yeah. you know, 
He's building local fridges for uh, the arid places like Laikipia North where mm -hmm. it can be powered by solar. Mm -hmm. But all he needs is a certain fund. In fact, he tried the government fund. It was too much. He couldn't get because of the bureaucracy. He ended up benefiting from the one given by the United Nations Framework for Climate Change. Mm -hmm. And uh, how could that be easy? And that one is an international one. Why can't we make the local one? And that one, I think the headquarters is in Bonn, Germany. And that is how he's been able to boost. Mm -hmm. So that one uh, is there. There needs to be more awareness. They need to cut uh, the process. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the issue of the plan to merge these funds. Right. That one I always say, let's approach it with caution. Right. Because we're going to put the women fund, the youth fund, and other funds together. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a scramble. So as in my opinion, I'd always want it to be independent if it's for the youth. And uh, I, I'm not saying our youth are not organized, but you can imagine whenever we are put one place with the women, mm -hmm. the women mm -hmm. and they are our mothers, they always find their organizational skills and they're the ones taking these loans. And of you course, we can, we can bet who will be favored when you yeah. go for that money. But still on the same point, yes. do you think, what have you been doing in your county in terms of policies to ensure that the youth will benefit and reduce this bureaucracy, you have to go to this place, you have to come with so-and-so, such things. What have you done in our county? In, uh, in Laikipia, we have, a, we have a youth fund. It was started in the previous uh, government. Mm -hmm. The fund, uh, until now, is uh, the last allocation was around 40 million. Mm -hmm. What uh, we made sure that at least let's get a body that is at the ground. And there were many proposals. Because the youth felt I cannot come all the way from Laikipia North. If we come to Lekipia North, we get the marginalization fund courtesy of that constituency because it's really marginalized. Mm -hmm. How will the youth come from that place to come to Nanyuki or Nyahururu towns to get a loan at the bank? Mm -hmm. So we work to the circle. We passed that policy last year when I was there. We passed, let's give it the local circles because there's a way these circles are penetrated. Mm -hmm. They are there at the ground. They are, they are in every center. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the ways we cut those bureaucracies to make sure that this uh, youth can go to the circle and access this. And then we tried as much as possible to reduce things about, you know, at times we tell them collateral, as in a youth does not even have a title. They especially like Kipia, there is no uh, title deed because they are still holding on to allotment letters mm -hmm. and uh, such things. So the, with that it helped. Right. There are challenges a bit of mismanagement, but as a county we are handling it. And uh, that really helped because if I look at the, the amount which was taken uh, from 2017 to now, mm -hmm. it is uh, 80% as compared to the other years when the money had to go back to the exchequer once the financial year would end. Uh, Honorable Sen, you had a comment before uh, Nani or Chris stopped. Yeah, and I, I picked from my brother and Chege on how does this to watch a complaint Mingi. True. The, the independence we are enjoying as Africans right now, mm. is uh, it's brought about by young guys at the moment. Kwame Nakroma, when he was leading a United Gold Coast Convention Party, he was in his studies. This game goes for uh, Patrice Lumumba. He was in 33 when he was leading the Congolese National Movement. Mm. The same for Nyerere on Tanu. You see, if we are enjoying the fruits of independence brought by young people at that time, I mean, who are we to complain? Right. That's what I wanted. But the, and the one on the fund, the revolving fund, also, I can also proudly tell you, Garissa County, my committee that I'm the vice chair on threat tourism and Deve enterprise development, mm -hmm. we, f we just concluded our bill on revolving fund for the youth, women, and persons with disabilities, was also enshrined in the constitution on Article 55 and 54. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that we are done with the regulations. The money, we are waiting for the money before the other financial year. Mm -hmm. The youth are organized, and we are waiting, you know, to benefit from that money. And uh, actually, in terms of employment, actually, we created committees on sub-counties to manage. We, we are calling it the revolving, the revolving fund committee on sub-counties. So we were putting each committee shall comprise of representative of the youth, representative of the person with disabilities, and gender in that manner. And, uh, and I can tell you it's employing more than anyone uh, as a bill. And uh, at least when I leave office, that would be my legacy. Uh, all right, yes. that is because awesome. that bill is entirely my baby from the beginning. All right, I want us to finish up with the part of development uh we have sgr for an example that has worked between mombasa and nairobi now there's that phase to naivasha and we're hoping it will get to kisumu but now i, I i'm looking at the Easter, eastern africa opening up like places like uganda yes. rwanda burundi those places will benefit from our sgr but then uh as a nation do we think we will have a good integrate integration between kenya and other regions I think so, but it, it, it is, of course there will be so many challenges, but as, uh, for me I want it to happen because uh, 
one, it will be so easy to do business between our three, four countries, you understand? And the opportunities uh, which are out there. But even before I comment uh, further, um, Hillary, mm -hmm. I think for me I have a solution for, 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 the, for corruption thing which is happening in this country. Mm -hmm. And this is my opinion. Uh, I think even when uh, us as Christian and my brothers are Muslim and um, uh, happy Ramadan, yeah? We believe uh, when Jesus came and he died for us, our sins were forgiven. You understand? And this is what I want to say. If we can forgive everybody, mm -hmm. you know, right now there is, oh, this is who and who I wouldn't mention name, corruption, 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 king of corruption, king of poverty and all that. If we can just forgive everyone and say that, even the gold is coming. If you stole, I'll come to gold. <laughs> if, I'll come to gold. Mm -hmm. If if mm -hmm. you ever taken anything or if you ever did corruption, mm -hmm. from today henceforth you are forgiven. And then, then mm -hmm. these people because this money they are hiding in their bedrooms, they are hiding in, in their girlfriends' houses, mm -hmm. it will circulate, and it will finish a lot and of problems. Will, or it will, they'll just be forgiven and they go with it. Be forgiven because no one will return corrupt corruption money. You understand? No one will return corruption. Remember even the system that they are using to fight corruption, they are also corrupt in some way. All right. You understand? Okay. So if we forgive everybody and say, you're all forgiven, we won't go and then suspend this law, banking law, a bit. You know, right now you can't even bank a million, uh, you, you'll have to fill a, a whole dictionary. So let's say suspend uh, this law for one year and forgive everybody. But if you are caught from 2019 henceforth, unanyongwa, that way, this money will circulate. Mm -hmm. These people who have stolen this money will start building malls. Mm -hmm. They will create employment to our young people. Mm -hmm. This pe money will start going on to Mamamboga. Mm -hmm. Because right now, if you go to Mamamboga, they are stressed. They are depressed. There is no money. Mm -hmm. So the solution for this country is to forgive everybody and let people use their money so that... Check it. Check it. It's 2019 May. Yes. yes. You have said they get they be forgiven yes do you know 2020 next year someone else will come and say to us and then from next month yeah i use a very good example mm -hmm. yeah uh of uh the example of jesus we are all forgiven only thing you need to do is not to be careful to sin so if they are the, the laws are, are made that if you are caught from now henceforth jela. <laughs> Fuguda kuna kesi ya kuna maneno mingi. We are at 50 million now. 50 million. Yes. If, he's, uh, if you know, his law will take effect, I can tell you Kenya will be 10,000 people. Yes. Because everyone is corrupt. Yes. Majority Matawu is not all. Tunafunga, mm -hmm. Like, keep your one's account yake. <laughs> You're going to close more counties. All right. Now that you've moved me to corruption, now does inequality bring corruption in our country? Hussein. Pardon? In terms of in the inequality, job opportunities, everything, resources, dis distribution or supply, does it bring corruption in our country? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that's the fundamental way of, you know, giving out tenders and projects. You know, Nairobi is not a town where you can walk in and get opportunity just the way they are. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, do something at some point. And according to uh, labor regulations in the world, it's just evident that uh, African youth are employed. Right. Unemployed and uh, and uh, maybe these small small businesses the, the normal hustling for a youth to do i mean that one will be okay it could be a free system but in nairobi in the town in the country we're living in you cannot just walk in somewhere and you know get a soft landing never it yeah. never happens in this country it will happen yes. actually uh honorable chris we have been having scandals we've been speaking of dams now we have the gold mm -hmm. and we have cases in court yes. uh, would we say the judiciary is becoming an impediment to fighting corruption and if not, are our security or the agencies that have been trusted to ensure that they have done due diligence and investigations, are they doing enough? What's the problem? First, the problem is, even apart from the judiciary, most of these organs have their challenges. And uh, as much as the judiciary has their challenge, it must work in tandem with the police. So you found even the Inspector General of Police and uh, the DCI saying that yes, there are officers from our 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 areas who, who are actually working with these gold uh, smugglers and the fake gold sellers and all that, and they were actually either transferred or suspended. Mm -hmm. It's something that was there in the paper and all that. The same, the the judiciary has admitted to. In fact, the JSC the other day gave uh, gave directions for some judges to actually fire, get fired. So those challenges are there, and. Uh, 
it's a time like this war of corruption has been, it has never come to light, uh, you know, in my age and all that, to be fought this, uh, this aggressively. So the other impediment is that, you know, there is so much politicization. You know, we see it, that this issue is coming, it's b being uh, fought. Then the, other, uh, day, uh, the next thing you hear, people fight in the office that is fighting that, or rather it's tasked to handle that. Mm -hmm. So the office lo loses focus. And you know, let me, let me not lie, we are politicians. People fear us, especially people who are officers, who have to go through vetting by us. You will take their badges. So when I go to a rally and say something that touches on my office, I have to go slow. Mm -hmm. And you know the other challenge is, before this uh, scandal is sorted, you hear there's another one. They right. talked about uh, the dams. Yeah. Now it's the gold. We don't know what else will come. And, and, and of course, you know, something will have to come. It's touching almost. Now, the, the, there was a guy who was very tough. I won't mention him. Now he's been mentioned on this. What do you think will happen if he, really he was in it? So he'll start forgiving the others. <laughs> you know, we'll go round, round, like round. That's why I'm thing. saying the solution is that. Like the you said, yeah. we need some international relations. Yeah. Once the train for East Africa kicks off, yes. we need... We need an, good rapport with every country in the world mm -hmm. for Kenya to develop. Mm -hmm. you know, right now we are having issues with Dubai because of few few people. Yeah, right. Yes. But you are you are you are what we are up all of us easy to you we, Kenya what we do where we export, we do everything. Even my friends who are from Isli, their their business is mostly in Turkey and in Dubai. So if you cause labor relations because of your, if you are hunger, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you're going to bring problems between nations. Yeah. People yes. just need to be human for once. Right. Everybody be human and do the right thing. And that, that will be uh, the best thing to do in the country, in, for, this country for this nation. Okay. Yes. Uh, he mentioned of people being fired. Now, uh, Chege, as we wind up, yes. do you think firing people who have been mentioned in corruption is something that should continue? Is it enough? It's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think th uh, that's a very, uh, that's a uh, first step. Let's fire these people who are mentioned in these corruption scandals. Mm -hmm. First step aside, whether you're guilty or not, step aside. Mm -hmm. So that it will make the other person who will come and occupy that uh, position be careful. Mm -hmm. Number two, I want to talk to African youth uh, as we wind up. Mm -hmm. Because, and Africa, gen uh, general uh, Africans, we need to know that uh, today, Africa is the most richest continent in the world. You understand? True. I support what Kagame said, President Kagame. We are borrowing even things that we don't even, we have here. You understand? So we need now to, 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 to start um, embracing our continent and start protecting. You see like those goals you're mentioning? Others that we never mentioned, I saw a report the other day uh, about five trillion kilos uh, smuggled through Dubai and all that. Mm -hmm. so where does that gold come from? Congo. Look the way Congo is. Mm -hmm. Guys are dying of Ebola. And this Ebola we know is I fixed by some people. You understand? We saw the other time, uh, it's unconfirmed, but uh, it might be true. Uh, a, 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 a trusted agency truck f had uh, gotten an accident and they find minerals. You understand? These minerals come, are coming from Africa. Today, every medicine in the world comes from Africa, then right. goes to the other side, then we are given 1% as aid, and then we are like, yeah, 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 you understand? Right. So we need to start developing our Africa mm -hmm. for Africans. All right. Yes. I was saying your final comments as we wind up. Final comment is that the youth of this country, we need to focus. We are sick and tired of people making decisions for us, you know, and uh, we should stop being cheap on doing campaigns, election. we should fight for, you know, our rights all the time. And, you know, what else the people died, but like Patrice Numumba, he was shot dead by firing squad. He was used at that time, mm -hmm. so we need to bring the you know cowardness out of our hearts and focus. All right, mm -hmm. Honorable Chris, yes. final comments. Yes, final comments. Just to echo, like uh, in fact, what my brother has said earlier on. You know, we are a country. This country, we are the one who's going to inherit it. We do not want a bad name for a country. So whenever these people in this fake gold smuggle, let them not be our heroes. You know, this I echo to my fellow youths. Be your own hero if you can't get a better place hero or rather a better place mentor. Because like he's right, you know, the next thing will start being placed the same way as a, some certain country in West Africa. That you cannot do business with them, you cannot get trusted, you know. Mm. So the other thing is this. He talked about the stepping aside. There's a certain politician who's been mentioned and uh, he's a senior leader from uh, Western. There's a time he was mentioned some few years back in another scandal. Mm -hmm. He did a very honorable thing, which I had never seen before. He stepped aside to be investigated. And when the investigation was done, it was found clean. Uh, His Excellency Kibaki appointed him back. 
So yeah. let's see this happening. Let, let's not cheer. Let's not take sides. Because at the end of the day, I've seen, I'm seeing a scenario where, you know, we are following these people blindly, maybe because of the handouts and all that. Let's not be cheap, as Hussein has said. Mm -hmm. Let's stand our own ground. And uh, in fact, I always think like we're retrogressing. If you see the way the particular members of the, the, the yester years, if you see the JF Kennedy, these are people who are very young and taken on serious parties. All right. We're not seeing it happening nowadays. So mm -hmm. let's stand up and let's take uh, these opportunities. Let's not complain. Let's be innovative. Let's be creative in our approach. Yeah, That's what we say. One second. Yeah, please. We, we need to rebrand our country and Africa at large right. because I, this is a challenge to the media because also media is failing uh, our nation big time because every morning you wake up, is a very first page is goals come, tomorrow, oh, a hotel, where are where bombing and all that. We need to start. There are so many young people who are doing great things. There is a, a lady who won a global citizenship and she's just 21 years old. We never saw that on a front page. True, true, there are true. other people who are doing great things. Myself here, I've donated over 300,000 pairs of shoes. I've never seen it on a front page, mm -hmm. but every day we wake up is negative energy. So I'm challenging the media also to wake up right. and rebrand our country. Because today, uh, donors are afraid to come to Kenya. Because of the bad things happening because to our the country. Because of the the branding which is not you know all right all yes. right so, so many thanks for coming they have been my guest uh chris mark honorable chege and uh, honorable hussein many thanks for keeping us company coming up next is why mashariki i see dj tiska is very much ready i will see you on friday many thanks for keeping us company my name is Dereva hillary have a good night